Hello, I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today is another Tiny Tuesday where we get really small and really experimental and kind of play with our supplies and materials versus concentrate on creating a full painting. Now, when you are painting small, I'm gonna be doing this in my sketchbook. I have gone from an eight by eight size all the way down to a two by two um, square in here. So I've cut this page in quarters and then cut it in quarters again. So these are really tiny. Um, and the reason I do this is because I can get a lot of experimentation done on one page. And this is going to inform bigger pieces in the future. Um, it's going to help me improve my skills as well as um, help me make decisions and choices at this smaller scale without being afraid I'm going to mess up the whole piece. And that way I can look at something and maybe discover something new I didn't know that I would really want to incorporate into a larger piece. Um, and also find make mistakes and be okay with it. Be like, eh, I don't really like that color combination. I'm never going to use it. Um, moving on to my next piece. So today we're going to actually experiment with warm colors. Now, warm colors are not necessarily something I gravitate towards a lot in many of my pieces. Um, I tend to paint a little bit more on the cool side for a lot of things. Um, but, and certainly I don't use like full warm color palettes for the most part. I use a very mixed color palette, but um, I did do the one folk art inspired uh, landscape where we were talking about warm colors and I was demonstrating warm color palette versus a cool color palette in a different um, video. So we're just going to, I'm using my core palette today um, by Golden and these are all the warm colors I have in my core palette. So three yellows going into oranges, reds, um, quinacridone magenta is where we're going to stop even though that's starting, it's still a, a warm color but it's starting to bleed into cool. It has a cool um, hue to it. I could also introduce these raw siennas and burnt siennas. These are still warm on this side, but I'm going to leave them off for now. All right. So with that being said, I'm not painting anything very specific. I'm not doing a landscape. I'm just going to be doing color um, kind of experimentation. I'll play with a little a uh, bit of geometric shapes and wet on wet and wet on dry and layering. Um, but I just want to see kind of where we are. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take out my yellow. So if, if you have a palette of paints and you have a couple of different um, colors in it or you want to mix your colors together, this is a great way to kind of play, mix your colors, see what you get. And you can focus one section at a time on your palette. So this is my cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to put a stripe of that down here. And then I'm going to pick up my nickel azo yellow. I'm going to put a stripe right next to it. And normally when you're doing color swatching, you don't put them right next to each other and let them bleed into each other. But that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to see how this looks. This is my diarolide yellow. Gamboge yellow would be similar in other color palettes. And then moving on to my Quin gold. Oh, I need a little bit more of that. And I'm doing, putting these down pretty concentrated. I'm gonna run out of room soon. And my pyrrole orange, my transpyrrole orange. This is a very bright orange. And then my cadmium red and my permanent scarlet now. Oh, and my quadacridone. I'm not going to get them all in here, but that's okay. So this is cadmium red. Cadmium red medium. Look at how opaque that paint is. I'll get one more in here. I'll get in permanent scarlet. And then my alizarin crimson and quin magenta, which are my semi kind of cool reds. I'm not going to fit in here. So this is permanent scarlet. You can see there. And really my cadmium red medium is cooler than the permanent scarlet. If I had to go back, I would switch them. Um, but that's okay. I just wanted to see what all of these kind of looked like together. And now I'm even just blending. So 
So that's a nice little transition there. Let's play with, let's let that dry and we can layer over top of it. All right, so I want to do some layering. So I'm going to go from my lightest yellow. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to water this down and put in a light, light value of yellow. And when you just don't know what to paint and you're having trouble getting motivated, sometimes doing exercises like this where we're just painting colors for the sake of painting colors and playing with them. Um, and that's the only purpose. That's like the only thing you're planning to do. And then out of that can sometimes spark something in you where you're like, yes. All right. So I have some Cornacridone Magenta. I'm going to do this. I want to get into this quickly because I'm going to throw these in wet on wet on my cadmium yellow. So this is great. In, the, in two videos ago, I was playing with pot, like a flower field on a background, and I wasn't really sure how it was going to be wet on wet to see what it looked like. So, And I like these. They didn't mix too much with the yellow. The yellow was light enough. I put the Quin Magenta on. So even though I'm getting bleeding, I'm not getting too much mixing of creating orange. Now, if I blend these out, maybe I will. Let me see if I can blend the area between. And this is all still a little wet or damp. So it does turn a little bit orangey as I blend in between. And then let's see what happens. Let me pull in. Oh, I keep shaking the camera. I am so sorry. Um, let me pull in some of this transpiral orange. Ah, this is going to be super dark. And you can see how as it dries, look at how much smaller. Let me see if I can wet these a little bit more. How much smaller the bleed is because this is turning from super wet to damp. That's kind of fun. And then let me put in to, um, a darker red. A cad let me do the cadmium red. I'm kind of thinking maybe. So I'm going to try to get the gaps like between the oranges and the pinks. This one travels a little bit better, but still not as much as the original quinacridone magenta that we put on there. That turned out to be a fun little pattern. Interesting, interesting. All right, let's move on to another one of our squares. So I like this. I'm really curious to see what that'll look like when it's dry and then also you can layer on top of it and see what happens putting even more colors on top. All right, come on there. Tape, stay down. That one's almost dry. I do want to put other layers over top of this, stripes in the other way, and see what that looks like, but it's not re quite ready yet. All right, so let me do um, a gradient. We haven't played with our alizarin crimson yet. I'm going to get in there with alizarin crimson. And I'm going to try to do a gradient wash with this from this side. Out. So this is great for experimenting with color as well as um, practicing techniques like your gradient wash. You don't have to do a whole page to practice your gradient washes. You can do a whole bunch of tiny little squares like this and practice like getting a really dynamic gradient. So from really dark to really light and a nice gradual in a really tiny space. That's actually quite difficult without eating up your whole 
space. There we go. So I have a nice um, gradient there. Oh, that's such a pretty gradient. I hope it dries well. Come on, bee paper, do me proud, dry, dry well. Um, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll play on top of it later um, in the next, after everything's dry. So this is almost dry. Let's, what are we gonna do over here? So we did wet on wet. We're gonna let this dry and do some layering. We're gonna layer over here. We did a little bit of um, mixing or kind of layering next to each other. Let's do something. Let me do some fun. I want to make yellow, like the yellows, the kind of primary star of this show. So I'm just going to do a stripe. So working on some brush control and I'm just going to play with my yellows. I'm just rinsing. Oh, I added a lot of water on that one. I did not dab on my paper towel. So someone was asking about um, harsh lines. A lot of times if you put too much paint and water on your paper and it's like sitting as like almost a bubble on the surface of the paper as it absorbs and evaporates, it's going to create harsh lines because what the water is doing is actually pushing the pigment out to the edges. Um, all right, let's see. I'm going to pull in some of this nickel azo yellow. And I'm just going to make lines in between. Now, I don't know how interesting this is for all, for all y'all. <laughs> um, I love to do this kind of experimentation. I think it's just fun and relaxing. And it does inspire me like I'll make something like this and then I'll all of a sudden like have a desire to paint sand dunes and then I'll go look um you know for some reference photos and colors and really kind of dive into that so experiment everything doesn't have to be a completed piece sometimes just making satisfying patterns and practicing our techniques our blending can be just as useful and important. Let's see if I can get this to be a really, really light. Like I feel like I'm saturating everything a lot. I'm gonna put down, I'm adding a lot of water. And now I'm going to sorry for the tapping on the glass there. Alright, so this is the nickel as a yellow again, although it doesn't feel like it. So I have this really dark one in the middle that I'm not, I don't love in my pattern. I'm going to add some water and see if I can lift some of it out. Um, core is a very staining paint, so it doesn't lift as well as some other colors, but I am going to try to lighten this just a little bit. And then maybe if I add some more of this, the gamboge or our diverlite yellow to some of the other areas, it'll kind of bring it together a little bit. All right, let's let that dry and then we'll do some other experimenting on top of it. And this is where you can see, like you can look at your water control and be, you know, be observant. Art is like, I don't know, that there's probably an actual statistic on this, but art to me is like 80% observation and 20% doing. Um, but it's observing what you did and why it behaved and asking questions about why something behaved the way it did and then making adjustments. Um, all right, I'm going to take some watered down quadacridone magenta and I'm going to layer it over top of these stripes. And then I'm going to leave a gap in between. So 
So you can see it shows up really well on here, but then when I get to the other layers, it almost disappears in here. Let's take some transpiral orange. This and permanent scarlet, I rarely use. I just feel like they're really harsh colors, but I'm sure they have their place in lots of people's work. Well, now I'm just making a flat wash on my stripes. All right, I'm gonna lift out some of this color and let it dry again. All right, so our yellow, let's put some So red and yellow, this is cadmium, cadmium red on top of this. Red and yellow together always remind me of when I was a kid and McDonald's <laughs> as a kid. I just, if you're from the U.S., most likely that'll make sense to you. I mean, elsewhere, their colors are red and yellow, but the Ronald McDonald, like the actual figure... So just working on more brush control and layering this red. Over this yellow. Ah. And I could play with this for hours and hours. I'm gonna now, let's see, blend these out. In between. I don't know why. And then basically you can play and play and play and allow your brain to catalog, just continue to catalog behavior of your paints, the colors, different stages that you liked or didn't like. All right. And then we have this beautiful gradient. I don't want to touch it. And you know what? I don't have to. I can just leave it. I can practice gradients all day long if I wanted to. All right. Let me see if there's any hope for this little stripey piece over here. I mean, it is an interesting texture. Um, let's do, we're going to do quadrochrome magenta stripes this way in the opposite direction. Boom, boom, boom. I do tend to favor Quinn Magenta <laughs> for a lot of my color mixing um, needs as well. There we go. You know, it's interesting though, like this side with this yellow as this dries, I've created contrast here. So I've put down a much darker color over top. So now this yellow behind it looks like it's almost glowing from behind. Um, so that helps tell us about contrast where something lighter when juxtaposed to something dark right next to it will make the thing that's lighter appear even lighter. It helps it start to brighten. All right, as we zoom out a little bit here, you can see um, this is what we finished this week and this is what we did last week. Two very different things. These were actual landscapes trying to work on composition and playing with one specific color in combination with others. Where this is, we were playing with all of our warm colors in our color palette, um, practicing some different techniques, and it's okay to paint just for the sake of painting. You don't have to complete a piece. And if you wanna paint for the sake of painting and take the stress out of it, um, feeling like you're wasting supplies and materials or um, you know, paper, which is a big one for a lot of people and I totally get it, you can go small. You can go and you know, 
paint and experiment and play around and not be too worried about what you get in the end. And you will discover things that you like and don't like um, when you're not afraid to mess up, when you're not afraid to waste space. So I just love these. These are so much fun. So these could definitely, you know, I can refer back to them when going to a bigger piece to help me push me. Maybe I want to push myself to use more warm colors. Um, and this will help me do that. So anyway, thank you so much for painting with me on this little tiny Tuesday, experimenting with our warm colors. And I will see you next week for another experiment. We're going to head over here and do another four by four. Not sure what yet, but feel free to leave suggestions in the comments. Otherwise, it will be a surprise. All right, take care, y'all. Thanks for joining me. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment and happy painting, y'all.